This year, uh, CPAC, the CPAC conference is um, underway right now. And it features the usual rogues gallery of bigots and grifters and fascists. But the conference this year also features the strangest piece of performance art that you've probably ever seen. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So um, Laura Jadid, who is a reporter who is covering CPAC tweeted that, so this exhibit that we are watching right here, you are handed a basically like Bluetooth headphones, sort of like a silent disco. But instead of dancing, you stand around and watch this guy cry. And while listening to these allegedly harrowing audio of, um, people who were arrested for their involvement in January 6th. So um, let's put this uh, tweet up next on the screen where Laura tries to uh, tries to go into detail about what we are watching here. So she says, I need you to understand that I stood here for about half an hour yesterday and this guy never broke character. He wept sitting on the bench, he wept sitting on the floor. He tallied days on a chalkboard set up for this purpose. So who is this MAGA Marina Abramovich? <laughs> we are looking at um, it, this performance art piece by someone named Brandon Straka. So Brandon Straka founded this group called Walk Away, which is um, encouraging Democrats to walk away from the Democratic Party. Um, and he was involved in the attacks on the Capitol on January 6th, but he did not serve any prison time. Thanks to um, what his attorneys described in their sentencing memos as quote, substantial cooperation with investigators. Um, I think we all know what that means. It's a little thing called called snitching. So the walk away campaign, as I said, is an organization organization encouraging people to leave the Democratic Party in favor of Trump. And let's go a little bit more into Straka, who is the actor in this performance art piece. Let's get into what he did during the January 6th riot. So according to Buzzfeed News, Straka had spoken at the Stop the Steal rally on January 5th, 2021, and then joined the mob that decided Descended on the Capitol the following day. But he did not enter the building or assault law enforcement. Instead, he admitted to urging other rioters to steal an officer's shield and to enter the building. So since then, since his involvement on that day, he has done a lot of snitching. Um, Straka provided information regarding Stop the Steal organizer Ali Alexander and members Amy Kramer. Kylie Kramer and Cindy Chafian. And this is in addition to a bunch of other people. So here is um, ultimately what happened to him was that Straka was sentenced in January to three months of home detention, a $5,000 fine and three years of probation for one misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. And then nine, something like 19 months later, here we are and here he is at CPAC in this quite thrilling piece of work. So Straka describes himself as a former liberal actor, which I love so much. And um, I don't know, there's, there's, there's two things about this piece that I'd love to get into. So it seems like he kind of is expressing guilt in a way of the fact that he totally ratted out like everyone who he knew had some involvement in the um, attacks on the Capitol. But I'm also not convinced that he's uh, totally done with Hollywood. I think I think that he is trying to get on their good side again, and he's using this piece of truly harrowing performance art to um, I don't know, Jr. You you said in the last segment that be, like every you know all these people are just want to be actors, and I think that that is very much the case with this one. Absolutely, so. no. Listen, this guy yeah. needs to have uh, um, the spotlight apparently, and he needs to show off his skills. I'm gonna get to what I'm gonna say, but I want to hear what Dan. He has a look on his face that I enjoy. <laughs> no, I, 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 of course, have a cynical, funny take, which is I'm happy to see a conservative who actually has uh, talent. 
and acting skills. <laughs> because I, I often reminisce to every major conservative you see right now has this backstory where they tried to make it in Hollywood and failed. One of my favorite uh, deep pieces of lore of all time, see if you can find this on the internet at some point uh, later after the show, of course, is Ben Shapiro being interviewed for one of his books by an author who just destroys him. Because like all of their ideas, they're just like not really liked. They're not really good at this like talent Hollywood thing being compelling. In this case, I mean, it, it looked like you know college graduate student level performance art. <laughs> I mean, you had some detail there. You had some dedication there. I, I think that you know it is very much a performance because you look at the uh, very light deal he got on for playing a little bit of rap snitch conditions over there on, uh, for the feds. <laughs> it looks like he is having a. Interesting, maybe go of it. I do like what you're saying, Caroline. He looks like he's having an interesting go of it and trying to maybe make another crack in Hollywood. Because after this stuff, either you continue grifting to right wingers, which is a very lucrative enterprise, or maybe you make that pivot with some of your other talents, which are above average. They're definitely class leading on the right wing. I need to see how long he went. That uh, what was the woman's name who tweeted this out? Uh, the first um, one, how long? Laura Jadid. Laura Jadid. She yeah. sat there for about a half an hour and watched him fully weep to himself. For 30 minutes. And what I did, I, I read like a couple of articles. Specifically, what was in everyone's ears? The sounds of people groaning in prison? Is that the idea? No, yeah. So it's people who um, I believe who had jail time um, or in custody for their role in January 6th, just like describing that oh, time in, in, in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like stories. Oh, because yeah. they've never yeah. heard of anyone going to prison and having to deal with anything that's negative, especially based off of something that maybe they shouldn't be there for. Because that's the whole point here. First off, many conservatives, damn near all now, have this weird victim fetish. And it's like, oh my God, I want to be a victim. No, 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 persecute me. But let me act like it's persecution. Let me act like I'm a victim so that I can continue to pull the veil over everyone's eyes, I guess a small number of people, to make it seem like I'm always, the government's coming after me. Look at these, these ragtag leaders always coming for my rights. And while they're building militias, organizing this, this insurrection attempt on the Capitol on January 6th. They're burning buildings, killing people. And then as all this happens, they're still going with the, but they're coming for me. I thought you guys were the law and order party. Did they break the law? Did they break the law? Is it okay that maybe January 7th, the next group should come in and try and raid the Capitol? And then by January 10th, we'll have a third group come in and raid the Capitol. Because it's, there's nothing illegal about this, right? Except on the day that it happened, they were saying it was Antifa. They were saying that it was a BLM. No, not just the day of. They said it for days and weeks and months and probably up till now are still saying it. And those folks need to go to jail. Oh, there's there's crisis actors, there's FBI, there's CIA. They got involved. Look how fake they all are. Well, shouldn't they be in jail? Is that illegal stuff they were doing? How about this guy? He said he was part of it. He snitched on all of his buddies, and now he's crying in a prison cell at CPAC, acting like it's a really really tough situation he was involved in. It's there's so many conflicting. Principles and points of views that these folks have, it makes your head spin, but that's the design. It's supposed to make your head spin. In fact, it's supposed to make that their supporters' head spin and go, everybody's coming for me. Everybody's coming for me. I can't think what's up or down as long as I'm a victim. But instead, you know, let's ignore the real victims. Let's ignore people who had false prison sentences and unfair sentencing throughout our judicial system. Who cares? Don't do the crime, then you won't have to do the time. I always hear that until it's them. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. And and wrapping up, I think that's a really important point about how post January 6th, like right in the aftermath of January 6th, it was all, oh, it wasn't us. It's not our side. It was Antifa. It was BLM, et cetera, et cetera. And then once, you know, the those harrowing images and more proof came out just to exactly how much right wing Republican involvement there was in January 6th. They've totally shifted the narrative because they know that everyone is still disgusted by those events. They have shifted it from this thing that they, you know, were like, oh, it didn't have, it wasn't a big deal, it wasn't even us, to now they are making into it, they're making it into this story trying to like valorize these people and you know I Tan I agree I I actually I do kind of think this art piece is like it, you said it amazingly like MFA grad school level like great but I do think that it displays this like very troubling trend that the right is is doing with January 6th that now that they know that it actually 
was a really big deal for the country and we're not just gonna move past it. They are totally trying to shape the narrative around it and paint them as being, yes, victims, as people who um, really care about our country and you know have suffered in jail and suffered jail time. So it's um, completely ridiculous, but you know, the right does art, I guess, now. <laughs> They're artists. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.